You may wonder and you may question, is there really a plan for my life? Is there some cosmic plan and force working for my benefit? Well, we're going to talk about that today on The Bravehearted Woman. Hey, everybody, this is Dawn Damon, and this is my show, The Bravehearted Woman. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, each week I bring important topics for women just like you to help you live with courage and confidence and bold vision for your future. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm always giving out free resources that empower you. So you ready? Come on, let's get brave. Hey, all you amazing, beautiful, brave-hearted women. So awesome to have you joining me once again. And today we're going to talk about things that really will resonate with you because my guest, she is an author, a speaker, a certified professional life coach, a Bible teacher. Yeah, she's no joke. She's a ministry leader in her church. And she says, although I wear many hats, my heart finds fulfillment in a variety of ways. But specifically, she's dedicated on her mission to support women who find themselves stuck. And if that's you and that's your sister, call somebody right now and say, you've got to listen to the Bravehearted Woman today because my guest, Tracy Glass, is with us. Welcome, Tracy. Oh, thank you so much, Dawn. I'm so excited about being on the Bravehearted Podcast. Yes. Your audience. Thank you for joining us. And we are brave. We like to do brave things, but mostly, you know, we figure that being a midlife woman takes courage and bravery to show up every day your best and say, I'm not going to quit on my dreams. I'm not going to quit on what God's called me to. I'm the leading lady of my show. I have to stay center stage. I'm not going to get off to the side and say, oh, somebody else's turn. So you are on a dedicated mission to find women who are stuck and help them get motivated. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what's the work that you do? Well, thank you. Oh, wow. A little bit about myself. Where do I even start? Because I, yeah. at times there's many versions of me. Yes. I'll start with the version who I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. About just on a journey as a midlife woman. And that's what I love about your podcast and your book is it speaks to the unique situations that we deal with. I'll say this before I get into introducing myself because I'm reminded of a story. I was talking to a younger woman yesterday and she's probably in about 45 and uh, we were on a prayer call. So we were asking prayer requests and she said, I just need to be honest. This menopause is killing me. And she began to just express her heart about it. And I chuckled. And unfortunately, I chuckled out loud, but it was chuckling because I can relate to what she is going through. And I gave her a few nuggets of wisdom, but midlife, 40s, right? You don't think midlife starts in your 40s, but definitely. So just a funny story about that. But about me, well, let's see. I am newly married. I got married in January of this year. Well, actually 2023. Sorry, not this year because we're in 2024 right now. And. I don't mind telling my age. I'm 60 years old. Yeah. Uh, listen, I got to interrupt you. Like you look amazing. You look beautiful. You just got married. I'm a little bit ahead of you. I'm 62 and I got married 12 years ago, but the second half of life, we should just talk about what love is like when you get to your okay. 60s. Come on now. Cause it's a whole thing, but keep going. Hey, and so I say that because I'm really in transition right now. It's a phase of life where I was single after being married for 24 years, I went through a divorce and I was single for about eight years. And so now I am remarried and learning some new things about myself and being married in midlife and in my sixties. So I'm in a transition phase. It's going well. We make one year on the 15th of January and we're going away and celebrating that. Also something about me that I really love. I have a new grandbaby. His name is Quincy. He is the smartest baby in the world. <laughs> yeah. Says every grandma on the planet. <laughs> every grandmother, every grandmother. My gr daughter told me the other day that she was taking him to like his first dental appointment. And he's two. 
And, you know, he rides backwards in his car seat, but she was passing my exit. And he calls me, Mimi, and he calls my husband, Joe, his name is Joe. And he said, Mimi Joe's house. And I thought, how did he know that? Riding backwards in the car seat. That's why I say he's the smartest baby. <laughs> but yeah, he's the love of my life. Now, you mentioned a little bit what, what I do. I'm a life coach and I love coaching women. I love doing group coaching. I love gathering groups together of women that are resetting in some way, rebuilding their lives and holding hope for them and holding their hand and giving them a step-by-step -step process as they move along, whether that be emotionally, spiritually, relationally, I just get so much joy of in doing that because I feel like that is what God has really called me to do in life. And I get to do it. And I have to do that. Other things about me, what do I do? I write. Yeah, I'm in the progress of publishing a third book and that will be coming out this year. It is a book specifically for women that have walked through separation and divorce. Mm -hmm. And it's a 30-day devotional for those women. Wow, I got to just say that is going to be so powerful. Now, you and I share a story because I, too, went through the divorce. And, you know, for a Christian woman to go through divorce, it, you kind of feel like you're wearing the big D on your chest and that you're, yeah, right. Yeah, I guess maybe that's a better place, right? And you just feel like everybody's looking at you, whether that's your own perception or whether that's because we know that there's a lot of religiosity that come at you, that a book like that is going to be so powerful, I'm sure, coming from your own experience. But don't women come to you that have gone through it now or in it and say, hey, help me, show me the way. Mm -hmm. I recently started a separation and divorce recovery group for women, and we meet twice a month. Our goal is really to move forward. We're not talking really about our divorce stories or anything, but we're talking about who we are as women, how God has created us. And even in the midst of the challenges, how he still loves us and wants to help us move forward and what that new plan in life looks like. And so it's probably one of my favorite groups right now that I'm leading <laughs> is the divorce and recovery group. That's awesome. So let me ask you a couple of questions because I know that you talk a lot about God's redemptive plan and you love inspiring women, equipping them. How was God's redemptive plan at work for you? Tell us how you met your husband. Well, tell me about, you believe in God's redemptive plan. Some people think it's just, hey, whatever, whatever, but you're telling me that God's had a thread all the way through your life, redeeming the hard places. Tell me about that. Wow, that is such a great question because where my mind just went, Don, is his hand over my life since probably five years old. Really? I, can, I have stories where I can go back and say, wow, God was covering me there and he was protecting me here. And it's been amazing. I grew up in the church. My grandmother was a powerful woman of God. And she made some brave decisions when she was in her fifties. Mm -hmm. And she made a decision to leave a traditional church that she was brought up in and go to a wild and crazy Pentecostal church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she raised us in that environment, in an environment of believing in God's redemptive plan for our life praying, decreeing and declaring God's blessings on our, over our life. And so I grew up with roots of deep faith and belief that with God, all things are possible. You know, in my teenage years, I didn't always, I wasn't always saved. I'll just be honest. There sure. Questionable things, decisions that I made that I have to really go back and look at, hmm, what were you thinking about when you did that one? <laughs> or were you thinking? <laughs> hey, and, but I would say that God really got a hold of me when I was about 24 years old. And he really changed me. And I had to make a decision. Okay, am I going to be all in or am I just going to play church? Because mm -hmm. I was raised in church. I knew how to play church. Sure. 
that's not what I wanted to do. And so at about age 24, I really made a decision that I'm going to be 100% sold out. And even when I went through the divorce journey, it was at that phase, Don, that I had to ask the Lord, I need to know that you're real. Mm -hmm. My circumstances. I know you're real. I know you redeem. I know you can restore and rebuild, but I need to really see that in action in my own life. And God was faithful. He did some amazing things. Times there were just miracles, I believe, as I walked through the process. And today, 10 years later, I look back and I said, wow, you know, I never thought that he could rebuild a broken heart. I never thought that he could take away the pain of rejection, abandonment, betrayal, all the list of things that go on when you walk through a broken relationship. But I'm here to say, yes, he did. And what it required me to do was to, again, be all in. It seems like that's been the pattern of my life. It's like, hey, Tracy, I want you all in. I want 100% of you. Mm -hmm. And so I really pressed in during that season of challenge during my life. And God met me. He showed up and showed himself real. Yeah, life. amen. God will do that. And, you know, just as you were saying those words, I could feel the pain too, because having gone through it as well, abandonment, betrayal, brokenheartedness, the rejection. And, you know, sometimes when I talk about divorce, I think about it as being the one left because I felt so abandoned. I was so angry, but I've discovered since then divorce is really painful, even if you're the initiator of it. Because no one gets married thinking it's going to end in divorce. No one wants to see the brokenness of a relationship. Do you think if someone even initiated the divorce, there's a lot of women that walk around with guilt. They all hear a podcast like this and they'll say, uh, you were left and did I do that to my spouse? Can God's redemptive plan, is God faithful? Like even if we feel like we're the ones like we made the mess, we did this thing, or maybe you didn't make the mess, but maybe you had just circumstances in a marriage that just were not able to be healed. Oh, in heaven. Right. right. Absolutely. He doesn't really care. I don't think he cares what happens. I think that he is all about restoration of the relationship between us and him. That is what he's concerned about. Yes. It doesn't matter who initiated or what happened but we can come to him and be repentant, right? And just say, hey, God, I messed it up. I made a mistake. And the Bible says that he's faithful and just to forgive us. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want us to carry all of the guilt and shame of our mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that's a trap. That's the trap, right? That tries to keep us bound and thinking, oh, I should have never done that. Or if I would have done it this way, or maybe I should have made that decision. And we beat ourselves over the head because of mistakes. And not just divorce, but it could be anything that we're going through. I know. But Jesus came to set us free. And I think that we need to walk in that freedom. We hold ourselves, our heads up, be brave, and know <laughs> that I don't have to walk in guilt and shame anymore because Jesus came to set me free. Mm -hmm. That's the hope yeah. that we have. Yeah, because you talk about how life just has these twists and these turns and you and I've lived enough life to know that there are many, many iterations of us, many reinventions of ourselves where like even in the beginning you said, oh gosh, who am I now in this season of my life? And it isn't that the core of us keeps changing. It's just that God brings us through different seasons and different times and we find that we have different gifts and different seeds that didn't bloom back there, but they're meant to be blooming right now. So for whoever's listening, God's not done with you, regardless of where you are or what you've been through. How do you teach women to unleash their potential? You get them unstuck. Yeah. I feel like you just did some of that just now. but <laughs> That is probably my favorite thing to talk about is getting unstuck in life. I think it really starts with Dawn recognizing that we are stuck Ooh, yeah. yeah because I think a lot of times we don't Ooh. see certain mindsets and behaviors and cycles in our lives as being stuck 
getting unstuck starts with recognizing that you are stuck. Yeah. That yeah. takes some honest reflection and the ability to admit, okay, girl, you're straight up stuck right here. I got stuck in unforgiveness. Keep going. I love what you're saying. And one way that we can recognize that we're stuck is that we're not moving forward in life. You know, I was reading this morning in my devotion time, Genesis 1, where God was saying that he made man and he wanted us to have dominion and to be fruitful and multiply. I meditated on that and I said, you know, this is what God has blessed each of us with. And we can know that we're stuck when we can look at our life and say, you know what? I don't feel blessed. I'm not blessed. I'm not being fruitful. I'm not multiplying. And I'm not taking dominion over my life and my circumstances. And so that's a sign right there that I could potentially be stuck. Another way that we can be stuck, and I think as women, is comparison. Mm. We recognize our God created uniqueness, that what God has for Tracy is different than what he has for Don. And oftentimes we compare ourselves with, oh, look, let's see what Don is doing. Let's see what Tracy is doing. And we have our phone and we're just flipping through everybody else's highlight reels and yeah. we're not creating our own highlight reels. And so we can be stuck that way. And so I love talking to women about what is unique about you? And let's tap into that and discover how God would want you to use your unique giftings and callings for his glory, but also for you to create your best life because mm -hmm. he's given us those gifts for all those reasons to help others, to promote kingdom and for us to fulfill in life. Yes. Yeah, so you have a book called Get Up Girl, Let's Go, Getting Unstuck and Living Free. In fact, that book won you the Golden Scroll Christian Living Book of the Year. Congratulations. Is that what you talk about in Get Up Girl, Let's Go? Absolutely. It's about getting unstuck. And chapter one talks about where are we stuck? Actually, mm -hmm. there's a uh, assessment in chapter one, and cool. it's 21 questions, and it will help you determine where you might be stuck in life. And so we kind of start there. And then as we go into chapter two, we go back to childhood, and mm -hmm. we start looking at, hmm, were there any events in my childhood that have me stuck? later in life. And so we start uncovering some things. We don't stay there long, but it, again, it's all for awareness. It's like, huh, I didn't know that time that my teacher said this to me, that now that is the reason why I think this of myself. I had one woman that went through my course, my 12 week course, and she mentioned a similar story, how she grew up when Teachers were allowed to tap you on the hand. Yeah. And there was a situation that would happen at school continually where her teacher was always tapping her on the hand and letting her know how bad she was. And she recognized, wow, that is a pattern of mindset that I have been carrying. And that is when it started. And so we go back to think of things like that. And then in the next chapter, we talk about surrendering it. Because again, what we just talked about, we don't want to carry that guilt and shame. God hasn't called us to do that. So we talk about how do we begin to surrender these um, stuck areas to the Lord? Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about the book. Good. That's very good. You know, it's interesting. And I believe this with all my heart as well, that so many of those issues that we have today, they're rooted in childhood. Of course, we know that. What we don't always understand is that it creates programming, right? Belief systems. And then we don't live above the assessment that we have of ourselves. We get stuck and we got to get those ceilings off of our lives. We've got to clip those roots that entangle us on our feet. We got to get those thoughts and beliefs out of our mind and through the word of God 
and through awareness, like you were just saying, and surrendering that, letting it go, because oftentimes we make friends with some of our limiting beliefs and some of our thoughts. And we're like, yeah, but who will I be if I let go of this excuse? Right. And what will I do? You know what I call those thoughts? I call those thoughts, the community in our head. Ah, <laughs> it conversations with us, right? Over and over again to remind us how we're missing the mark. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, one thing that I want to encourage everybody with is one thing that has really helped me get unstuck was getting into community with women. Yeah. And I think oftentimes, depending upon our past and things, we may have some beliefs about women in a community. We may, either we love women in gathering or either we're like, no, I don't do women, right? So true. Right. But I believe that he, there's so much healing that can come forth when we're together in community. I experienced that in my own healing journey with just friends at church coming around me, blessing me, reminding me of my purpose, actually helping me get to my purpose. And so I just want to encourage people, don't isolate. You know, if you feel like you're stuck, if you're going through some major issues, whether that be fear and anxiety, depression, don't isolate yourself. Come out and share it. You know, tell, begin telling people, hey, I think I'm feeling this way so that people can love on you. Yes, it's so important. And I know that if you're listening today, you might think, well, it's difficult for me to reach out, but you can text. That's an easy form of a reach out. On the other hand, hey, woman of God, friend, brave heart, if you notice someone's missing, or if you have that inspiration or a whisper or a nudge, act on that, because maybe it will just take an invitation, a text from you, an invite to come and to join something, to get somebody out of their place of pain, get them involved. Because very often when we're hurting, we don't reach out. And we know that's the antidote. We know that's the thing that we need to do, but we don't do it. So if both of us, those that are stuck and those that are unstuck, if you'll reach for somebody and help them show the way, like that's what you're doing, you know, in the world today, they call it the Sherpa, you know, the, the person who will lead the way I've been through this terrain. I've walked this walk. I can walk with you. You're a valley walker saying, let me help you get to the other side. I and love powerful ministry. Valley walker. That's my new name. There it is. <laughs> you're not a valley girl. You're a valley walker. <laughs> What would you say in closing? It's been so great. I can't believe we've already been talking for 30 minutes here oh. about. I know it goes so fast. So we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about the pain of divorce or pain is pain, rejection and hurt and betrayal. Maybe you're not divorced, but maybe there's been infidelity and in that your broken heart doesn't mean you have to have a divorce, but we've talked about God's redemptive plan. We've talked about getting unstuck, all of that coming together. Last thoughts or comments, just take a moment and share, preach, do what your grandma did. Take a minute. <laughs> wow. You know, I want to just encourage everybody and say that there's always hope because I think when we go through difficult seasons in life, we want to give up. Oftentimes we give up on ourselves an area where we can be stuck, where we feel like, oh, I'm too old, you know, or that's past me. We oftentimes put like our dreams and goals, we put them up on the shelf and they're collecting dust. And But I really believe 2024 is the year where God wants us to take those things off the shelf, those real precious things that we have been believing God for, whether there's it's prayers, whether it's been something that we have been wanting to do in our life, but we just feel like I don't have the resources or I don't have the skills or the support or whatever I need to do it. I believe that this is the year where God wants us to take those things off and re-give them to him and to pray about it and really ask, invite the Holy Spirit to become part of your journey and to ignite a new strength and a bravery mm -hmm. in you to move past fear or whatever else that might be keeping you from being brave and courageous, getting unstuck and just being everything that God has called you to be. And that's what I want to do is just encourage you to continue to be brave. 
And, you know, brave isn't necessarily that I figured it all out. Brave is I'm figuring it out as I go. I'm kicking fear to the curb. And I am just holding God's hand as we travel along this journey that I'm on. So I hope all the women were encouraged. Yes, it's so good. Coach, speaker, entrepreneur, Valley Walker, my guest today, Tracy Glass. Tracy, you have a course that people can get involved in, women can join, and a website. How can we reach you? And we'll make sure that we put all of that information in the show notes. Absolutely. And I can send you the link to my course. The, the good news and the bad news is the course is filled. But I am taking registration for the next course, which there we go start in April. So I could definitely send you that link, but you can reach me at tracyhester.com. That is my maiden name. I'm in the process of revising things to my married name, but tracyhester.com, or you can reach me on Facebook. I am Tracy Glass and as well on Instagram. So I would love, you know, message me and we'd love to chat. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. And hey, y'all, I also want to invite you to my private Facebook group. If you are interested, it is Courage, Confidence, and Mindset Mastery for Midlife. And we'll have the link in there. It's private, it's elite, but it's for you. And this is Dawn Damon, your Braveheart Mentor. I'm going to leave you like I always do, woman. Is it time for you to find your brave and live your dreams?